All right, so um, the last thing that I had done, I had clicked run, and I'm seeing it on my device. Um, wherever you're at, if, uh, if, if you're running it, I'm going to click stop, debugging it, to go back to the environment. And then uh, inside of my config XML file, let's look under the screen plugins. So these, this column here, we've got core, custom, and installed. There is one plugin installed in our project, the whitelist plugin. The homework over the weekend, which uh, I didn't see that many people do it, unfortunately, but over the weekend there was the homework that had said, uh, you need to go to a, the Apache Cordova website and find one of the plugins and and tell me right inside a blackboard what is that plugin to your understanding what it is and you couldn't choose a plugin that someone else already chose so I wanted people to choose a different plugin so hopefully um, all the plugins then get defined by you in your own words which of course we'll will use and we'll talk about did anyone in in the class choose the whitelist plugin did that one or got to that one? Okay. Well, uh, this plugin under installed as well as core, we'll we'll find them right now under the Apache website. But these are ways to expand the capabilities of our project. At the moment, the only one that's installed is the whitelist, which is basically a plugin that allows your app to connect to certain websites. This makes it secure. Without that plugin, your, your, your app may accidentally connect to a website that is malicious and has viruses or something. With this whitelist plugin, we are able to say down here under common domain access. These are the, these are the approved websites. So this plugin does that. It, it allows you to to approve websites. You can also click on a plugin. It'll give you a little bit about itself and a link for more info. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is we'll we'll start with a kind of a interesting, fun one, and then we'll do some other ones. If we find the plugin, let's see what was it called again? There's one here for music. Under media, so all of these plugins to give us these extra features, we can learn exactly how they work at the Cordova website. Before we use a plugin, let's open up the Cordova website. which is cordova.apache.org. Let's go to cordova.apache.org. Cordova.apache.org. And then we'll go to the documentation. So go to plugins. But let's go to documentation. And on the left side, it's a bunch of documentation, but then at the bottom, plugins. So the one that I'm looking for is here, <coughs> dialogues. On the left side, we've got plugins, we have dialogues. So there's a, there's a plugin about dialogues. 
This plugin provides access to some native dialog UI elements. This is a way to make pop-ups. But also, this plugin, if we scroll down a little bit, methods has a way to make a simple beep, to make like pop uh, sounds that beep like an error message. All of these, like camera and contacts, you should see here. There's camera, there's contacts. I don't see dialogues. Maybe I'm not looking at it right, but does anyone see dialogues in this space here? Disorientation. Hmm, I never noticed that it's not there. I wanted to add the dialogue ability. ADL, app security. That's interesting. Never noticed it. But I wanted I want to add the dialogue plugin, the plugin to create pop-up boxes and make beeps and all of that. If you don't see it under core, another way to set this up is under custom. So enter the ID of the plugin you want to install. The documentation under Cordova website tells you right here also how to install it. The ID for this plugin is Cordova Plugin Dialogues. If we were using Cordova, like I mentioned last time, classic Cordova is that in the command prompt, you type commands to accomplish things. We're using Visual Studio, which is on top of Cordova, which gives us a pretty interface of buttons to click on. And that works really well. But for some reason, which I never noticed, there isn't the dialogues button to click on. Yes? Is it? Let's see that. Under notifications. Notifications, Cordova. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. Cordova plugin dialogues, but they called it notifications. That's the one I'm looking for. We could have done it the same here also. I bet it would have worked just the same if I had plugged, if I had copied and pasted the name of the plugin right here, Cordova dash plugin dash dialogues. I just was thrown off because they've named it over here, notification. So anyway, under core, select notification, click add. We're going to add the plugin so that our app has the ability to work with various notifications. Yes? Actually, that one's a slightly different one. There's one at the top here called Code Push. That's right there, Code Push. So there is a plugin that will push notifications to people. But that one's got a really weird name. They call it notification, but it's not that kind of notification. It's more of pop up dialog boxes. Code Push would be one of the ones, or one of these other ones would be for actual real notifications. So it'll take a moment because what happens is Visual Studio connects back to the Apache Cordova mothership. It'll give you some feedback here telling you what's happening. And then eventually this plugin is installed. And if you wanted to uninstall it, you could. So what we've got here is now the ability to write code to make dialog boxes, to make sounds like error messages and all of that. We had. Previously, uh, via Notepad++, when we wrote any code here, remember we had the ability to make a very simple pop-up box with alert. And then we wrote a message, hello. We had that JavaScript classic code to make a simple pop-up. There's a better way to make pop-ups that look more like uh, an actual Android pop-up an actual iPhone pop-up. That will still work in our project, but it won't look like an official Apple pop-up or an official Android pop-up. So we need to read up a little bit here. How does this work? We have the ability to do an alert pop-up, a confirm pop-up, a prompt pop-up, and a beep. We'll do the beep first. And every time we come in, I always ask us, remember, please mute your devices. This is the one time where I say, oh, you can turn up the volume on your device so that you can hear it beep. But the way this will work is, I'm 
the left side, or if you scroll down, if you scroll down to the part about how does Navigator Beep work, if we scroll down, the device plays a beep sound. The code that we need to write, the documentation will show what is the code, what, is, what are the options and such, and an example. This is a very basic one. This is saying, you're going to write some JavaScript code. Basically, everything here in the Cordova website is JavaScript code. Visual Studio, when we compile it, will then convert that JavaScript code to the correct code for iPhone, for Android, for Windows. We just need to write the right JavaScript code. It says navigator dot notification dot beep with an option of how many times to beep. Times is the number of times to repeat. It's a number, a whole number. One, twelve, two. The example, super simple. You write JavaScript, JavaScript navigator, dot notification, dot beep, with a number two in the parentheses, and it will beep twice. For us to do this, see if you can help me. In Visual Studio, try to help me figure this out. Where do I write that JavaScript? The tip is it's somewhere in the Solution Explorer. Step one in the WW folder, yes. Step two. Scripts. Scripts, probably. JavaScript. Step three. Index JavaScript. Probably index. We'll come back to what this platform overrides is a little later. But yes, it's going to be under index.js. Double click that. And then we get some JavaScript on the left here. We'll look into the details of what this JavaScript file is and all of this other stuff a little later. But just to make this work very, very easily, let's go to line 21. I'll explain why a little later. Let's go to line 21. And this is where we're going to write navigator dot notification. dot beep, open close parentheses, semicolon. Backing up, we can make a comment. Cordova code to make a beep sound in our app. Navigator object dot notification sub object dot beep method. And then on the inside, let's say three. So as we're writing our code here, Visual Studio is telling us you've made changes which you haven't saved. Control S, or you can click the little save icons at the top, or file menu save, or Save all if you're working with more than one file. Control Shift S. Once you save this, these turn green. You've saved all your changes. And remember, it'll keep track of all of the changes you do in the project as long as you have that file open. You will also see here on the right side, I currently have clicked my cursor somewhere. And I've made changes in that area. So if I scroll up to the top, it seems like it might be working. So if I kind of scroll around, I will see I made changes. The best way to make sure that this works is to have um, a real device, because uh, your virtual device, unless the speakers of your computer are on, you might not hear this. So I've got my real device. I'm then going to click Run. Remember to save your code, then run it, let it build it, 
the first time might be the slowest, and then subsequent builds will be faster. What I like to do before I run it is I like to press home on my device so that it goes back to the home screen, so that the device is empty. Then I click run so that I know that it pops up the latest version of my code. And uh, someone is whistling at me. So I'm going to wait a moment. Everyone's device is a little different. Everyone's device has a different default sound. Here's mine. You should run the device? Yes. Turn, maybe, maybe turn your volume up. It should have played automatically. You heard mine beep. The type of beep, though, gets controlled by the user in the device, right? In this case, yes, this beep is what they have set. For notification beep? Yes. We can set uh, whatever sound we want in a different way. It seems to be working. Three beeps. I hear a lot of different sounds. It seems to be working for people. So this, uh, not this uh, type of dialogue, this type of notification is very basic. It's just going to play a sound. If you look at the documentation of Cordova, it gives you the example code. It then gives you perhaps also quirks. So on different devices, this code might work slightly different on different devices. If you're running this on an Amazon device, it says it's going to play the default notification sound. If the, someone is running your app on an Android, it's going to be the sound under this option. If someone is running this on a, on a Windows device, it's going to be a generic sound. So um, this is how we will use the, the documentation of Cordova. We want to accomplish something. We want it to play a sound when the, uh, when the file gets saved. We want it to vibrate on an error. So we find the appropriate plugin to accomplish that task. We read the code, we add it to our project, we read the, the, the possibilities of it. So I think now that we've kind of all confirmed it works, let's turn our volume down. If yours didn't quite work, that's OK. We'll check it a little bit later. But let's turn our volume down. It seems to work. Yes. Let's come back to that a little bit later. It, we'll check it a little bit later. So. Um, Navigator.notification beep in our in our code here. This I'm going to stop debugging to go back to regular view here. What we just did was we wrote some JavaScript code, then it got processed and it ran on the device. What we did on a more technical level, as soon as the project started, it started to beep. This code is is there kind of naked on its own. It just runs. We're going to set ourselves up instead to make it beep after you click a button. This is happening uh, on the moment that, that the project loads. I want it to beep or do anything upon a button press. So that means we need to kind of look at this index.js file a little bit to kind of understand what's happening. If you back up to the top, there is a link that you should follow at some point and read what this file is to get a little bit better understanding of it. What follows on line 5 is then an immediately invoked function expression. It starts on line 5 and it goes down to the very end, line 32. We did that when we wrote our own JavaScript back with Notepad++. 
common syntax to write JavaScript. We, it started a function for us, and then it ended a function. It's got strict mode active, like we did as well when we wrote our JavaScript last month. Then a very special line, 8, document dot add event listener. We've seen that before. We've seen something like L button save dot add event listener. This is an event listener waiting for something to happen. Cordova sets up by default, wait for the device to be ready. So let's annotate this document a little bit if you'd like. Cordova waits for the device to be ready. Then runs the on device ready function. This line is super important. Once we integrate the project from last month into this month, we can technically just drop all of the code we did last month into this project, kind of. We need to keep some of the code that exists in a brand new template file. And this is one of those lines. When we actually integrate, we will see deeply what we need to keep and what we can remove. But this line is very important. Cordova has to confirm, is the device ready for us to use? So we check for a device ready. If the device is ready, then it runs the on device ready function. And notice if you click in Visual Studio, if you click once or double click on some piece of code, it will highlight it elsewhere where it exists, like Notepad. So if you know if you double click add event listener, it also says you've got add event listeners over here. Very useful to help you find your way through the code. If you're trying to figure out someone else's code, you know, one way in these code editors is to select a function or a keyword and it then highlights it elsewhere. This other stuff about bind and false, don't worry about it just yet. But once the device is ready, once that is triggered, because we have other triggers, on a click, on a double click, on a drag, on device ready. It runs on device ready function, which is defined here. Function on device ready. And that goes uh, from line 11 down to 24. This function then executes at the moment that on device is ready. Uh, Cordova is waiting for your device to emit the, uh, the trigger of device ready. So then Cordova continues the code. We've got another event listener here. We'll come back to these in a moment. Then it's got to do. Cordova has been loaded. Perform any in initialization that requires Cordova here. Basically now, following uh, line 16, here is where we're going to write all of our custom code to do anything with Cordova. Here's where we're going to write for it to uh, take a photo. Here's where we're going to write for it to vibrate once you save your, uh, your, your data. Here's where we will write all of our code for our project, basically. So that code that we wrote last month will basically eventually copy it and paste it all into here before the end of on device ready. In this particular project, there is a get element by ID. Um, it's waiting for listening received. Once it uh, receives it, something changes. Set attribute style display none display block. Well, what's happening there is in you don't have to look at this, but in the index HTML file, in the index HTML file, there's a spot here where it says connecting to device that has a class of listening. When the JavaScript loads, it's going to check, is the device ready? Once the device is ready, it's then going to change to, to display device is ready. So device is ready is first hidden until the device is ready. While the device is getting ready, it will display connecting to device. The JavaScript will kick in. It will then hide, connect it to device, 
and show device is ready. That's what you see when you load it up here. You, you should see that it says device is ready. That's the HTML part, but then it's the JavaScript that detects that the device is ready. Why is the class spelled with a space? Why is the class called event? That's something that not just Well, just one at a time. Uh, Anna, first, what were you saying? Why is the class spelled with a space? Over here? Yes. It's two classes, actually. There's a class of event and a class of listening a class of event and a class of receive. So there's two classes at once. Um, that's just the way they decided to do it. There's many ways to do it. They decided to do it that way with two classes. Hiram, what was your question? Oh, yeah, so that was kind of my question. So there's really two classes right there? Yes. You can name, you can, name, you can have as many classes as you want within the same tag? This is another way of doing if I had class listening oh, okay. and then only one class event. They combined it in one, but it has to have that space. <coughs> That's two ways to do the same thing. Use one class, but with a space, or write two classes and its own class and its own one. So anyway, eventually we're going to remove this. Uh, so this is just what it's doing at the moment. But eventually, we're not really going to need this connecting to device. Device is ready. We're going to have our own app with our own cool splash screen and our own icons and all of that. But for the moment, this is how this project is working. There's a little bit of HTML. There's the, there's the, little, H, there's the little Cordova mascot. There's the text that says Apache Cordova. There's device ready. That's relatively simple right here, what, dis, what displays. But how it displays is kind of complex in the JavaScript. Eventually, we were, we're going to remove all of this chunk here. Eventually, we're not going to need this because this is only for this little template thing. We want our real app eventually. What else is happening in this, in this index is document.addEventListener, waiting for the event of a pause, waiting for the event of a resume. I'm currently in my app. And if I were to exit the app to leave, my app emitted the event of pause. So Cordova, the JavaScript is waiting. If there is a pause, run the onPause function, which is down here, which does nothing at the moment. And they're saying this is a place where you can save your high score for the moment or do other things. When I return back to my app, when I return back to my app, what the app does, it emits the resume event. Cordova is waiting for the event of resume. When I come back to the app, that's what happened. It said resume. Cordova sees it, it captures it, and then it runs on resume, which does nothing as well at the moment. But this is the part then where it would reload some information. So this is our JS file. Everything that we're going to write should be basically inside of the on-device ready function. That's why we wrote this code here. As soon as the app is ready, play the sound three times. For a little practice, I don't want it to play a sound until I press a button. So we're going to need to write code to set that up. But does that kind of make sense? It will more as we work. But does it make sense of what the structure of this is? Any questions on what else is in this JS file? OK, what I want to do is I want to press a button to play that sound. That needs two things. I need some sort of button to look at to press, and then JavaScript to make it play. Open your index.html file. Very, very simply, let's say um, line 23. We're going to create a button here. We have a tag button. As you start writing your tags, B button, you can press tab because it knows what you want. Here's now where I really recommend for you to use the shortcuts that Visual Studio gives you. I start writing button, I press tab, it finishes writing it for me. Angle bracket. So I'm going to create a button here. I'll just 
right click me. This button will display click me. I need to write JavaScript, so when I click this button, it plays the sound. When we made buttons previously, we needed one more thing for the JavaScript to know. We mean this button. Anyone remember? An ID or a class, but an ID. So let's add the ID attribute. If you back up inside a button and press space, it says, oh, you've written this code. This is other valid code you probably want. So this is much smarter than Notepad. Notepad will do auto-completion, but it, honestly, it's kind of dumb. It will only really auto-complete from a small set of possibilities, and it will only auto-complete what you've already written. Uh, writing in Visual Studio has something called IntelliSense, which intelligently senses what it thinks you probably want, because you've written this code, you probably want this other code. So from that list, I can see ID. So I can either type it myself or find ID and double-click it. And it automatically wrote for me the equals, the quotes. And then from here, it, it's probably finding other va values that already exist elsewhere in the project. Very useful there, too. But we're going to make up one right now. BTN, um, BTN click. Whenever these pop-ups pop up, if you don't want to see them, you can press escape on the keyboard. Got a button with some words, click me, an ID so that we can identify it in JavaScript, some name, BTN click. Switch back to the JavaScript. Uh, back on the JavaScript uh, file before before the click I made myself some space I mean before the beep I made myself some space there's many ways to do this let's start off this way var we don't have Java we don't have jQuery so we have el not dollar el l btn click equals document dot Do you need the space? on where After the, the no these are optional uh, but we've been doing spaces between equals before so I would keep that document dot add event listener again instead of typing it and typing it not, sorry, not event, uh, document, uh, get element, get element by ID. Document dot get element by ID. So again, as you start typing this, get element, you can press tab. It will type the rest for you because it's very common to accidentally type capital I, capital D, and then it doesn't work. Open close parentheses, close semicolon. I said we don't have jQuery mobile. We previously, <coughs> via J, jQuery, would have written this var dollar l btn click equals dollar parentheses. But because we don't have jQuery just yet, this is what we're writing. No dollar here. Document get element by ID, which is all becoming a shorthand with jQuery. BTN click, no pound sign. Yes, pound sign for the jQuery version. And because we selected that element via jQuery, dollar there. So we've talked about this before, but just quick refresher. jQuery uh, style, plain JS style. The jQuery again, what's their motto? Write less, do more. The jQuery motto on their website, write less, do more. Both of these are basically equivalent, which we said last month. This one's obviously less to type, which means less to mistype. 
they both do the same, but since we do not have jQuery installed in this project, we cannot use jQuery code. But we can always use plain old JavaScript. Plain old JavaScript always works. Next line, lbtn. Now that I created my variable one time, it knows that I might want to use it in the future. So as I start typing simply el, all my other elements that we will create, all our variables, all our functions, IntelliSense will know that it exists, and it will then help us type it quicker. lbtn dot add event listener. And sometimes it's a little too much to look at, but notice as I'm starting to type add event listener, it says this is what you have, and these are your possibilities. Way too much to look at sometimes. That can all be edited in your options. But we've got add event listener, open parentheses, and then here it says these are the possibilities you can use here. On the event of abort, on the event of key up, on the event of waiting, or a pause, or all of that. We want on the event of a click. So I guess you could select it from here or type it. Click, comma. Or you can press escape to get that out of your way. So there's some element. We're waiting for some event. The event is a click. After clicking, we'll, ru we'll, we'll run a function. fn do something. Semicolon. The uh, jQuery method would have been $LBTN click dot on. Click F and do something. Write less, do more. But sometimes uh, what you have to write contra between the two is very different. This one is, uh, you know, the name of your object dot on. This is the name of your object on add event listener. They both have a click. They both run a function. This is a few bytes less to write. It's like nine bytes or something there, but it adds up over time. Smaller, less code, more efficient code less possibility of mistyping. The problem is that when you create an object in the jQuery style, you have to then use code that affects it in the jQuery style. You cannot mix add event listener with jQuery style. If you create it in jQuery style, you have to use it in jQuery style. If you create it in plain JavaScript style, you have to use it in JavaScript style, plain JavaScript style. So this is us setting ourselves up. Once we click that button, we'll run this function. Next, time to define that function. Function fn do something. I haven't defined the function, so it's not popping up yet. But after we define it, then it'll know. Open close parentheses. Open close curly brace. Break that curly brace to the next line. All of this is to set ourselves up. Once we click the button, then play the sound. So what's the last step? Play the sound by moving this code into that function. This code was playing automatically as soon as the app loaded. 
because it was not bound by any other trigger. It just happened. Now I want to move that code. Uh, I guess you, yeah, you can drag and drop in here too, just like Notepad, and tab that over. I don't want that navigator dot beep to happen on its own. I want it to happen on the event of running that function. That function runs on the event of a click of an object. That object is defined by the object in the HTML with that ID. I edited both the HTML file and the, C, the, the, the JavaScript file. The little asterisk there tells me that both of them have not been saved. I wish they would change color. But that asterisk says both of them have not been saved. So this is a good example to do save all and then run. And then I will allow you for a little moment to turn your volume up again so that you can hear the result. Turn my volume up. I'm going to do save all. run. A button should appear on your device. You should click it and then it should play three, three tones. This again, uh, if, you, if you're running on a virtual device under one of those simulators, you won't be able to do everything. I think if you plug in headphones to the computer, then you could hear it from our computer. But OK, my project is loading up. It didn't play any sound yet. I see a button that says, click me. And I will click me. And I turn the volume. There it is. Press it again. So in as many times as I click the button, it's going to play that sound. Turn the volume back down. Let's do one more thing and then we'll take a break. Um, if you go back to the, if you've got Cordova documentation still open, this is all inside of the uh, dialogue which doesn't make sense, but OK, there's a sound. It's a part of a dialogue. We have also alert, confirm, and prompt. It's back up to um, alert. Navigator.notification.alert shows a custom alert box. Most Cordova implementations use a native dialog box for this feature, but some platforms use the regular browser alert, which is less customizable. So the code, the way that we would make a pop-up box that looks like a real Android pop-up box, a real iPhone pop-up box, is right here. The generic code is navigator.notification.alert, parentheses, a required option, a second required option, and then two optional options, not options, I guess, parameters. A required parameter a second required parameter, and two optional parameters. Oftentimes when we look at documentation, especially here on this site, anything that is optional is in brackets, square brackets. Anything that is not optional is no brackets. So if we, if we want to make a nice alert pop-up, we need to display a message, which is a string. So in quotes, we want a pop-up that says hello. So in quotes, we would write hello. We need an alert callback. Callback to invoke when alert dialog is dismissed, a function. This then expects a function. A pop-up will happen. You click OK. Some function will then pop up or run to do X more. Optional is what text do you want to display on top of that little box in the title? It's a string, so it's in quotes. It's optional. The default, if I don't put anything, it'll just say alert. And then optional, a button name, string in quotes, defaults to OK. They'll get a pop-up that says some message. There'll be a button that says OK. If I wanted to say great, 
Then I add the fourth option in quotes to make it say great. So this is how this notific this is how this documentation works. The generic code, how do the pieces of the code work or what do they mean? And then an example. Let's look at the example. They don't have this inside of any function, they don't have this inside of anything that triggers it. If I were to copy and paste this code as is, it would automatically, as soon as the app loads up, a pop-up. I don't want the pop-up until I click. Navigator.notification, they broke it into multiple lines, which is valid. You can keep it on one long line, but they broke it by having the first message, comma, then the callback function, comma, title, comma, and the name of the button, no comma, since it's the last one. This pop-up will appear. The title of that little box will say, game over. Inside the box, it'll say, you are the winner, with a button that says, done. You click the done button. The alert dismissed function runs, and right now the alert function does nothing. Let's copy and paste this code and change it a little bit. So sometimes you just write the code yourself, sometimes you copy it and change it a bit. But this is found here under the Cordova dialogues under alert example. We're going to paste this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. Well, I, technically, we during the debugging that is currently still running, I believe we can still edit our JavaScript. It's still gonna be active, but for the moment, I would say we would stop our debugging. I want it to beep. And also pop up, maybe. Um, so inside of the do something function, let's paste the code that you just copied. This is all of the code I just copied from the Cordova site. There's the part that will actually make the pop up appear. I put it inside of the do something function. So this will not pop up, should not pop up until someone clicks the button. It's going to pop up and say, you are the winner. The title will be game over. It'll say done. You can change this to whatever you want. I'll leave it as is for the moment. Once the person clicks the done button, alert dismissed runs, which currently has nothing. That's where I'll ultimately move the beep. The do something is going to do a lot. You click the button, it'll make a pop up. Once you close the pop up, then it'll run alert dismiss, and then it will beep. So, can we edit it in CSS how it looks? Then we have a notification alert. We, we could, but we don't want to. The point of using navigator.notification.alert, this is the code that we write so that our pop-up looks like it's on the right device. This should display on an Android a style of pop-up that we see commonly on all Android apps. This will display a pop-up on iPhone, iOS, that will look standard like a standard pop-up. So we could further edit the, the pop-up, but the point of using this is so that we don't have to, so that it automatically looks like a real pop-up on the person's device. So I'm going to run this. Then I'm going to test it, then we'll take our break. But the idea here is we're going to have a button that does different things, in this case now a pop-up with the sound that plays after we click Done. Changing what it says is obviously very easy. We just change what goes in the title, what goes in the message, what goes in the, in the button. 
So in my case here, so on my real device, I've got the click me button, I tap it, I get a pop-up, it says game over, you are the winner, exactly what that code said, the button says done, the style of this looks like an Android style. I click done, <coughs> the, three, the three tones. So let's pause here for a break, see if it worked, if it didn't, let's check your code, it's 8.20, we'll be back at 8.30. Um, and then we'll do a little bit more.